What's the worst neighbor from hell behavior you've witnessed? We live near a protected area for endangered animals. One of the animals that the sanctuary is meant to protect is bald eagles. Since we live next to a field, it's pretty common for an eagle to sit on our porch and disembowel its rabbit for dinner. We have a neighbor that keeps calling the cops on us because the bird is on our property, and claims it is traumatizing his innocent children. He treats us like we're the ones murdering fluffy bunnies for our own amusement. Looked out of my window to see my neighbor leaning over my 6 feet high fence, and stretching right into my yard to saw some of the main branches off my tree. My tree had never extended over the fence, and her limb hacking killed it. A few months later, she cut one of the wires attached to our boundary fence that was holding up a shade cloth in my backyard. I called the cops on her. And a couple of weeks later, all the plants along our boundary fence mysteriously died, and seriously damaged some of my trees. And I still have no idea what her problem is. Plant mulberry trees. Those things are unkillable and grow rapidly. And they attract birds who will eat the fruits and shit everywhere. This holy shit this. My grandmother's next door neighbor planted one when she was a newlywed. When I was a kid, the thing was so huge it hung over my grandmother's driveway and the bird shits were so bad they would stain the paint jobs on cars that were parked anywhere nearby. City ordinance said she couldn't cut the branches down herself, because the tree roots were on someone else's property. When she retired and got a huge bonus from her company, she purchased the lot on the other side of the neighbor, and lined both sides of his yard with mulberry trees that she patiently groomed and bent so that they'd hang over his yard. He got really pissed off about it and cut off the branches of the trees. So she called the city and sued him for destruction of her property. He was forced to reimburse her for the trees. It was glorious. I guess not from hell, but still. The neighbors ducking kids man. It starts every spring. They only have one speech volume, which is scream. It sounds like children are being murdered on a daily basis. They jump all over my porch swing even though I have repeatedly asked the parents to tell them not to. They run up and down the stairs of my porch constantly. I am just waiting for one to get seriously hurt, and then it's my fault. I have a narrow driveway, and last summer the one got his bike wedged between my house and my car's passenger door, scratched the shit out of it. Basically they just run wild and the parents either don't care, or are too drunk to notice at times. I don't know when I turned into a crotchety old man at 30, but damn those kids. I live down the street from a heroin dealer. My house was constantly being robbed by his customers. I forgot to lock my car and they stole my GPS, and all my loose change. I didn't lock my shed and they took my lawn mower and gas. I assume they filled their car up, but on the bright side, they returned the can to my shed after using it. If it wasn't locked up, they would steal it, which is why I don't have a bike anymore. Superstorm Sandy flooded my house with two feet of water. My front door wouldn't close because it had swelled from being immersed in water. My neighbors cleaned my house out. They took everything I own. They even went through my attic. They ripped my pipes out of the wall. They stole my oven, my sink, my furnace, my water heater, my refrigerator, my pavers, my car, my boat my sports autograph collection with signatures from Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle, my guns, but as expected they never even touched my book collection. Back to what they took, my guitars, my video games, my TV, my sleeping bag, my computer, and my coin collection. Living next to a drug dealer isn't always bad. My cousin and his roommates had their house robbed. Turns out, they had been living across the street from an OG who goes by G Money. He was a decent neighbor, told them that if they didn't give him any trouble, he'd keep his customers away from them. After their house was robbed, word got out that they were friends of G-Money, who happens to be doing time right now. Long story short, they paid $40 and got their 5 laptops back, along with a letter of apology. Edit, wow this really blew up. To clarify, the $40 was a dead drop type of deal. All they took were the laptops. It still sucks to have your house broken into, but paying $40 to get 5 laptops is better than having to buy new ones, and the letter of apology was along the lines of, sorry, we didn't know you were friends of G-Money. 
Neighbor behind my house would scream at her kids daily to the point our kids would be afraid to play in the backyard. By scream, I mean things such as, you ducking little cunt. Get the duck out here. Verbatim quote, to a kid that looked like he was 8 or 9. My ex even tried to help out one day. One of her kids was up a three-story tall tree of hers that hung over our fence and wouldn't climb down. I wonder why? And this banshee was screaming all sorts of bile at him to come down. My ex calmly says to the boy, please climb down, sweetie. You might fall, to try and convince him. The woman then turns on her, what the duck do you think you're doing? Don't you ducking talk to my kids. I made the mistake of calling the cops on her once while she was abusing several people. She then came after me physically. Neighbor's kid used to always just walk right in the front door. Before I moved into the house, the original owner murdered the previous neighbor for always parking in his driveway. House is cursed to make annoying neighbors I guess. Edit, I don't know why people keep saying American Horror Story. No. Edit, people keep asking why we didn't lock the door. My mom wasn't much of a mom. And we were four young boys who had better things to do than worry about that stuff. Nowadays I'm always locking my door. I work in the agricultural industry, and sometimes have to help sort out disputes between neighbors. I have always been shocked as to how two grown adults, or two families, will allow the situation to degrade to the point of violence. One time I was contacted because of a damn usage dispute. Basically, the two warring neighbors were unsure of the boundary between their two properties, and both wanted to use this one particular dam. Both had in the past fenced it off, and both had cut the other neighbor's fence down. I identified who the dam belonged to and provided advice accordingly. The neighbor who came off second best wasn't happy. He didn't say anything to me, really. But he did throw a ton of dynamite in the dam, rendering it useless. It also exploded the animals drinking from it at the time of detonation. Another person is suspected of taking revenge on his neighbor for some sort of personal slight. I say suspected, because it's been thoroughly investigated and no one knows the clear details. All I can say is that the neighbor disappeared without a trace, and rumor has it, was cut into pieces and stuffed down an out of commission borehole. On other occasions. I've had to deal with neighbors who have shot at each other, lit each other's infrastructure on fire, stolen each other's property, including livestock, or even in one case, revenge at the neighbor's daughter. Keeps life interesting. My neighbor cut the cable with her garden shears, I presume an argument over the bill. She wouldn't let the cable company in to repair it. So they had to bypass her house, my house and about six others had no TV phone nor internet for eight days not from hell exactly we used to live in a property with two units and we were in the back lived there for four to five years before the new front unit neighbors a couple in their 60s to 70s moved in a few weeks in she complained about our front yard bit which was not a shared area and it consisted of a tree and three to four small bushes she wanted us to plant something nicer in our private area 2 times 1 meter, keeping in mind we were in the back so no one from the street could see it anyways. My mom told her she didn't have the time to do that, so she suggested we hire her gardener to take care of our area, and mom told her we didn't have that kind of money to spend. Next thing you know, she sends us her grandson, he would have been late 20s, to try and convince us to change our plants to what she wanted. She hinted we should do it because he was a professional private detective and he was really good at his job. Crazy plant lady. I have actually been a terrible neighbor. It's something I actually still feel a little bad about. Sort of. Basically where we lived we would get a lot of snails when it rained. I mean buckets full of them. It was a ritual of my mother's to go out and collect them all and dispose of them. Humanely with a brick. Being a 6 year old I absolutely loved snails and would feel really bad for the little guys, and would go out and grab as many as I could in order to save them, of course it made sense for me to simply throw them over the fence into my neighbor's yard where they could go live happily. It was only much later that I overheard a conversation between my neighbor and my mother in which she was saying all her roses had been almost destroyed by snails, the even worse part was apparently they belonged to her husband, the roses, who had passed away so they held a lot of sentimental value. After that the snails got released to the house behind us, 
whom my mum didn't like, so no one was none the wiser. Sorry lady neighbor, I hope your roses grew back okay. My neighbor, crazy old bitch. One week after buying my house asked me to remove the pile of roofing shingles from the corner of my lot. She asked nice enough, however I informed her that I had her entire kitchen to install, a bathroom to put in, house was stripped when I bought it, and floors that needed redone. I only worked on the house maybe 3 to 4 hours a day after work. So the shingles weren't too high on my priority list, but I was obtaining a roll off dumpster next week, and that I'd clean them up when I got the dumpster. Seriously, where would I put a house worth of used shingles without a dumpster? Somewhere else in my yard? About 3 days go by, and she comes over and orders me to remove the shingles from my property corner, still about 10 feet away from her property, because her dog is eating the shingles and getting sick. Her dog weighs literally 2 pounds and is named Little Bit. I said, well, while we're having this discussion of your dog eating shingles on my property, I can fix this for you. Keep your dog off of my lawn. For the safety of your dog, I have a 90 pounds dog I am bringing when I move in, and I don't want your dog to get hurt. She called the police on me. I informed the officers of the dumpster coming in a few days, they asked me to hurry it up. I had to tell them that you can't hurry up a waste management company dropping off a roll off at a residence, as contractors tend to get priority. So he was fine with it. That was enough of that. That isn't all of it. After two years of living here, she moved her firing most of the way onto my property. Still having the snow plow blade on my cub cadet. I pushed it back over into her yard, it was made out of neatly stacked bricks. It became a sloppy pile of bricks and ash when I was done pushing. She got hostile over that as well. Called the police. I called a severe friend of a friend over, and he came over right away with detailed information about my property. Officer told her to not put anything on my property again, and to let me just do my own thing to avoid future confrontation. And the latest thing she has done. Two weeks ago I planted some nice evergreens, about 8 foot off my property line two rows of them. Mostly to block off the view of her house, and to add to the appearance of my property. I am saving money for more trees to transplant onto the back of my property line in much the same fashion, but I don't have the holes dug quite yet. So just the two rows of trees on my property between me and my troubled neighbor. I come home from work on Thursday, and she had called a tree cutting business and said that the property was hers and that her grandson had planted the trees without her permission while she was in the hospital, and she wanted them removed. They destroyed my yard and removed all 14 trees. I asked my buddy across the street what the duck happened, and he gave me the company name. I found said company. They apologized, and since the trees were small, they kept them, so they have given me back the trees. The owner of the company is coming out today to help me put them back in himself. Good company, probably suing the neighbor over this one. In our last apartment, we lived on the second floor. A family on the fourth floor had this kid who was maybe three years old. Every morning between 6 and 8 they'd walk up the staircase after having been out, and most of the time the kid would start crying. Loudly. What was the solution of the parents? Leave the crying kid in the staircase on its own for 15 minutes. Our apartment doors carried sound through them very well, so it was basically like having a screaming 3 year old in your hallway every morning. Let's just say it got on my nerves rather quickly. So what did I do? Nothing of course, I'm a Swede, lol. Many stories, but I will leave this bit of speech my genius neighbor spouted last weekend. Screaming this from her front porch to her adult son who just jumped in his jeep. Put your seatbelt on. You been drinking. 